Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ben Kieser with Applied Flow Technology, and it is April 1st, 2020. Hope that you are all doing well and having a wonderful week. And uh, if you are watching the recording of this webinar, uh, this has been going on during the uh, horrible COVID-19 coronavirus, and I, uh, myself, and on behalf of AFT, we hope that all of you are staying very well and safe and healthy during this time, and also the same for all of your families, friends, and colleagues. So uh, be careful out there and uh, follow the, the various uh, measures, and uh, let's all continue to work together well as a team to get through this uh, challenging time that we're having. And as such, AFT is currently working from home, but I came into the office today to try and ensure a stronger internet connection and sound connection for today's webinar. And everything should work well on that, but if all of a sudden the, uh, the feed gets lost on the sound, I've got one of my colleagues here that will let me know and I'll try and troubleshoot then and there. Also, I might mute myself from time to time because I might be coughing, not because I have the coronavirus, but because here in Colorado Springs, Colorado, where we all live and work here at Applied Flow Technology, the altitude is very high and it is a incredibly dry climate and when I talk a lot, my voice gets very dry and uh, a little bit scratchy. And so uh, with that, um, if I have to mute myself, it's just because I'm uh, taking a quick moment to rehydrate. So if you hear the sound fade out at a certain point, just hang in there for a few seconds and I'll be back on. And so uh, thank you all very much for joining me today. I am very excited to go over the new features of AFT Fathom 11. Fathom 11 is our latest uh, release of the Fathom software, and uh, it just came out a month or two, or about two months ago, and so I'm looking forward to going over some of the key new features. And what are the new features? Well. Uh, here's how you find the new features for AFT Fathom 11, is if you go to our website, aft.com, then you can go to the products menu and then AFT Fathom, and then once you're on the product page, scroll down a little bit to where it says, view the list of uh, full features, uh, this guy right here. And when you click on that button right there, it's going to take you to our page of all the features for AFT Fathom. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll be able to find this button right here for Fathom 11 new features. And this will take you to a handy dandy comparison sheet that will go through the key new features that we came out with in Fathom 9, Fathom 10, and Fathom 11. And so if you happen to get a little bit behind on the support upgrade and maintenance agreement and you're wanting to renew or get that reinstated, this will be able to tell you if you were to get upgraded to Fathom 11, you'd also be able to take advantage of all the new features that came along with Fathom 10 and Fathom 9. And so the first list right here is the key new features of Fathom 11. But if you scroll down further to the second page here, these are all the new features that came out in the latest version here of the software. Uh, there's a lot of them. I'm not gonna go through every single new feature today. I am gonna hit the big ones. And so how do you find out more information about this? Well, it's in the software itself. So once you go to run AFT Fathom, I was just running a model here. Uh, give me one moment. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> I was doing a batch run of a model to run 25 different scenarios right before I started because this is one of the models I'm going to use to demonstrate several of the new features. But nevertheless, when you're in AFT Fathom 11, simply go to the help menu and then you can open up the help file. And when you open up the help file, here's uh, uh, the very top right here where it says getting started with AFT Fathom, just click on new in version 11. And this will walk you through all of the new features that we came out with. It'll give you some nice screenshots and then it'll also link to other areas in the help file that will give you more detail about how to use those specific features. So I'll talk about uh, a good handful of these today. Now, in addition to AFT Fathom 11 just being released, I also wanna let you all know that AFT Arrow was actually released this week. On Monday is when it was officially released. And so if you want to download either Fathom 11 or Arrow 8, go to the Downloads menu under Current Versions, and then select your desired product. And then this is where you can download the latest release of the latest version of our software. You will need to be logged in to our website so that you can download the software. Uh, if you are not logged in, don't worry. It's very easy to register with our website. You would simply go to the login button, click on where it says register. Let me circle that for you. And when you click on register, simply fill out the form with your information. <clears throat> and then we will send you a link to activate your registration with our webpage. And then that way you'll be able to log in to our website, which after you go to log in, you just click on the login button, enter your new email address and your new password, and then it'll say hi and your name, and then you'll be able to go in and download the software. Now, if you do not receive that activation link right away that we're sending to you to activate your registration, <clears throat> then please contact us right away, and we'll be sure to activate that for you on our side if the email doesn't come through, but check your spam or your junk folder first, there's a good chance that it'll end up in there first. Excuse me. So uh, that's how you can download the uh, latest version. You will also need a new Fathom 11 license number and a new Arrow 8 license number to install the software. If you don't have that, don't worry. Just give us a call and let us know what your Fathom 10 license number was or your uh, arrow 7 license number and we'll be able to get that information for you how do you find your license number simply go into the software under help and then go down to about aft fathom and that'll display your license number right here in the window and that's how you'll be able to see uh what license number you're using for fathom 10 so we can get you the license number for fathom 11 as well as arrow eight all right so one of the first features that i'm going to demonstrate with you today is our new multi-scenario comparison tool <clears throat> first off i hope that you all are very familiar with how to use the scenario manager this is one of the most powerful tools in the software that will allow you to easily compare a great multitude of different operating cases within a single model file. So if you look closely here with how I labeled my scenario names, I have a parent scenario and then I have all these individual families of scenarios. And so for each of these scenario families, I have a family of scenario where my supply liquid height is 25 feet. And then I have four scenarios, including the parent, where I'm changing the pump speed from 100% down to 85%. What I did after I created that first family of scenarios is I simply right-clicked on the parent scenario, and I said, clone with children. When I cloned that scenario, it then created the second family of scenarios, 
And the only thing that I needed to do was in the parent scenario, the only change I made was simply changing the liquid height of the supply tank from 25 feet down to 20 feet. Once I make that change at the parent scenario, it will then propagate down to these three scenarios where the speed is already defined in each scenario accordingly. <clears throat> I went through that process three or four times where I cloned a family here, another one, and then a fifth family of scenarios. So really, there are 20 scenarios that I want to, or 25 scenarios that I wanted to look at. Uh, or let's see, four, six, eight, 12, uh, 16. Um, <laughs> math is hard today. <laughs> All right. Anyway, you can easily see that there's a lot of scenarios. So that's nothing new. We've had the scenario manager in there for a long time. And if you want some tips and tricks on how to use the scenario manager, or if you're just trying to figure out what in the world it is, go to the learning center. And then under tips and tricks, this is where you can find a whole list of articles that we've written that will help you learn how to use the software more effectively and efficiently. So if you click on the magnifying glass and you do a keyword search for scenario manager, you're gonna find a handful of articles that talk about the scenario manager. If you scroll down, there's two articles that I wrote several years ago and it still applies today. The first one's called, how many models of the same system do you have? That's where I introduced the scenario manager and what it is and some of the functionality. And then in this article here, I provide a practical example on how to set up your scenario manager intelligently. That way you can easily run all of your different cases. So, that's what I did before I started the webinar is I did a batch run of all these scenarios to generate output results. But why did I do that? Well, one of the most important tools for analyzing pumping systems is the ability to create a pumping system curve. Now, Hopefully, if you're watching this, you know how to generate a pump and system curve in AFT Fathom. If not, I'll show you. So this was my original pump curve scenario before I started changing things. So let me go ahead and run this scenario really quick. But before we run it, I'm going to open up the pump window. And that way you can see I've got my pump curve, uh, my MPSH curve, my efficiency curve, etc. And so when I run this scenario, generating a pump and system curve is super easy. You just go to the graph results window and then click on the pump and system tab. And then because I only have one pump in this system, I'm just gonna do the single option. And then I'm going to plot the system curve as well as the preferred operating range. And let's go ahead and include the efficiency. So I go through the process of setting this up. I might want to increase my flow rate range out to 800 gallons per minute and maybe throw in some more data points. So we'll generate our plot and there it is. So here's my pump and system curve with the efficiency curve overlaid on top. And these little X's mark off my low level and high level of the preferred operating range in relation to the best efficiency point. Now, that's not anything new. Uh, neither is the process of taking this graph and then clicking on the folder with the, with the blue plus sign on it. And what I did was <clears throat> I filed this graph away in my graph list manager right here as a graph list item. So this is a template that I prepared because what I want to do is in all of the different scenarios, I forgot to click my mouse again, in all of my different scenarios, I want to be able to plot a pump and system curve for all scenarios. And wouldn't it be nice if you can plot them all together on the same plot? Well, yes, you can. And here's how easy it is. I went through. 
first, you have to make sure that you create a graph list item first. That's your first step. I've already done it. And so that's this graph list item called Ben's pump and system curve. The next step is I want to go through and do my batch run. So if you go to the file menu and then you click on start batch run, when you click on add scenarios, this is where you can check the boxes for all of the different scenarios that you want to run and generate output for. Now, here's the critical thing that you have to remember is after you create your graph list item, the next thing is to make sure that you check this box. So when you create that graph list item, that can serve as a template for all of these other scenarios as long as that uh, pump it, as long as that graph is applicable to the other scenarios, meaning if the junction number <coughs> J203 doesn't change. So as long as you have a J203 in all of the different scenarios for a pump, then that graph list item will be able to apply for all my scenarios. So here's what happens is when you check this box and you choose the specific uh, template that you want to generate, you will start your batch run. I've already done that, so I'm gonna cancel out of here. And as you can see, I have blue text for all of the different scenarios. So the blue text, that indicates that I have output results for all of those scenarios. If I was to load any of these scenarios individually, I can go to the output window, and I can see my output results. So now if I go to graph results, let me move this down a little bit here. You can see that we have a whole bunch of graph list items. Basically what this is was the initial <coughs> graph list item recreated for each individual scenario while I was doing my batch run. So if you're actually watching this when it did its batch run, you would see it run the model like usual, and then it would go through and it would generate the pump and system curve, and then it would store the pump and system curve uh, one after the another after it goes through each individual scenario. So I've actually done this twice. I did it one time on, looks like February 13th, 2020, the latest is today, April 1st, 2020. So here's how you generate your pump and system curves where you can list all of your curves together on the same plot. Again, what I wanna show is all of the different system curves that are generated when I change my supply level from 25 feet down to 20, 15, 10, and five. And then I also wanna show the pump curves for 100% speed, 90%, 95, and 85. Hang on one moment. I think you just had to rehydrate there. All right. So now let me go back to my graph results window. So here's how you create your graph list for or your all of your puppet system curves together. Right click on this special <clears throat> multi-scenario pump and system curve graph folder. <laughs> That's a lot of words. And then click on load multi-scenario graph. What this will do is it's gonna generate a list of a whole bunch of stuff. So these are all the things that I'm going to be graphing together. Now, I could just go ahead and click on generate graph and bam, it does it on the spot. But look at the legend here. The legend is got a whole bunch of plots all in one. That's very, very busy. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to right click on that uh, load multi-scenario. And here's the thing. My system curve is going to be the same for each different speed, 100%. 95, 90, and 85, et cetera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the box for system curve 
in the other scenarios. It's just providing duplicated information. Now, for this next family of scenarios, you see where it says 100% speed, 20 foot liquid supply. That scenario, I do want to include the system curve for because that's the different liquid height. But for all the sub cases of different speeds, I don't need the system curve. So here is how you can go through and simplify things a little bit. That way you're not plotting all the different plots when it's just duplicated information because the graphs are on top of each other. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the pump curves. So I only care about four different pump curves, 100% speed, 95, 90, and 85. So I'm going to keep the pump curve checked for 100% speed, 90% speed, which is this box right here that's checked, 90% or 90 and 95%. So now I don't need any other pump curve scenarios selected. Now, again, the only reason why I'm doing this is to simply simplify my graph so that way the legend is a little, more, a little bit more manageable for you to know what you're looking at. So we just keep going down and toggling off the pump curves for all of these. And I'm going to do the same thing for the efficiency curve. So I'm going to turn off uh, as well as the preferred operating region. So here I can uncheck all these other boxes. And that way things are a lot more simplified. Just a quick moment here. Oops, those I want to show and these. Okay, so now I regenerate my graph. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> now the legend is actually much more manageable to be able to look at this and see which curve is which based upon the color scheme. Now, isn't that useful where you're able to see all of your graph list items all in one? Uh, so I've got my four pump curves, 100% <clears throat> speed, 95%, 90, and 85. And then I have all my different system curves. I have my 25 foot liquid supply, 20 feet, 15, 10, and five. You can see that we've got all the efficiency curves as well as all the preferred operating points. And so now this is how you can easily plot all of your different pump and system curve combinations on the same plot really easily. Make sure that first you create your graph list item. That way you have a template so that when you come in and you do your batch run, <coughs> you can simply go in and check the box here. And that way it'll create all these graph list items for you rather than you having to go through and do it yourself. So that's a really nice automated process for doing this. Now, that's the first new feature I wanted to talk about today. The next one goes right along with this, where I want to be able to see how the input information is different in all the different scenarios. In previous versions of the software, if I wanted to see input changes from one scenario to another, you could, but you could only look up a direct ancestral path. <clears throat> so I have that great grandchild scenario the parent scenario, the grandparent scenario, and the great grand, uh, the great grandparent scenario. So in previous versions, you would only be able to look up the changes across those scenarios at a time because it's only going to compare things in a direct ancestral lineage. Now, if you want to compare all of the results, I'm sorry, if you want to compare all of the input for all different scenarios at the same time, you can. That's what's called our scenario comparison tool. So if I right click on a scenario 
I can go down and open up my scenario comparison tool. You can also find that in the tools menu. So if you go to tools, scenario comparison tool, two ways to get to the same thing. Now, this gives you some different options on how you might want to, excuse me, on how you might want to compare your scenarios for you. So custom is where you can simply go in and check the boxes to compare any scenarios you want. You might have scenarios that are completely unrelated from each other, like this particular scenario that's checked and that scenario. And you know the reason why uh, they may not relate to each other is because if you make a change in this scenario, that's not going to pass down to this scenario because this scenario is a child of this parent, not this one. So some scenarios that you might be comparing side to side may not make much sense. But if you want to look at everything, you can. You could just do exhaustive. So what you would do is check the boxes for which scenarios you want to look at. The next thing that you would choose is which specific properties and parameters do you want to compare? So here we have these three accordion menus. <clears throat> the first one is all of the pipe and junction properties and then system properties and then uh, other things as well. So let's expand these and take a look at what's in here. Here are all of the parameters for pipes that I might want to compare. Now, if you know for a fact that none of your pipes in any scenario are doing heat transfer, then you can uncheck these boxes and that way it just, it simplifies the table that you would see next. So if you don't wanna compare certain parameters, simply uncheck the boxes for those. But let's go ahead and look at them all. So these are my pipe parameters. I can check, or I can click on this plus sign to expand and collapse that. Here's my parameters for heat exchanger. So these are organized on the junction side by the junction type. So I have my, <coughs> my heat exchanger parameters, and then I have my pump parameters, reservoir parameters, screen parameters, valve, etc. So overall, this is gonna be a big list of parameters since I'm showing everything. 50 pipe parameters, and 166 junction parameters. That's fine. You might want to compare all that stuff. Well, let's go ahead and collapse this and let's take a look at the next one. Select junction properties. <clears throat> I'm sorry, general properties. So what is this comparing? It's going to compare your solution control for each scenario as well as your fluid properties or your system properties for each scenario. That is really useful because not only do you have the ability to change any pipe or junction parameter across scenarios, you can also change your solution control tolerances or your system properties in each scenario. So I would wanna make sure that if I have any changes in fluid data or solution control tolerances in any scenario, I wanna be able to evaluate that. Last but not least, this is where you specify which specific pipes and junctions you want to include in the comparison. If you have a model that has several hundred pipes and junctions and you only carry, or you only care about maybe 20 of them, this is where you can check and uncheck the boxes accordingly for the specific items that you want to compare with each other across all the different scenarios. So once you set all of those things up, the next thing that you would do is click on show comparison. <coughs> now, when you click on show comparison, things are organized in certain ways. So right now, I have two columns right here, item and parameter. Item is simply the pipe or junction ID number. So as you can see, there's a pipe ID number. If I scroll down in that list, let's go ahead and maximize this window so we have some more space. So if I scroll down here, here's the, the uh, pipe 202, 
P203. If I keep scrolling down the list, you can see now that we're onto the junction. So there's the reservoir, there's the screen J202. If I keep scrolling, lastly, you'll see here's our solution control parameters and here's all of our system properties. Now, you've seen some green and yellow colors. What do those mean? Well, you'll find that out in the legend down here where things are color coded in certain ways. So let's say that for a uh, particular item, let me scroll up a little bit. Let's look at, well, let's, let's focus on system properties, okay? So here in the system properties, we've got fluid name. Well, these are all of my different scenarios here at the top. So if I scroll to the right, you can see the parameters for each of the different scenarios. So if I was to look at the fluid name, <clears throat> I have water at one atmosphere, water, 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 etc. The fluid name for every single scenario is water. So if the parameter is the same in every single scenario, you're going to see green. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what green means is that you have the same parameter in all of your different scenarios. Yellow means that at least one parameter is different in the different scenarios. So if I scroll up, let's take a look at the valve. Well, here's the valve. And we can see for all of these parameters, they're the same in all my different scenarios. However, there's two of them that are highlighted in yellow, initial pressure and initial temperature guesses. So as you can see, that is something that has at least one difference in the various scenarios. So that's what the yellow color means. The yellow color means that something is different in one of the scenarios. Green means that for these parameters, everything is the same. Now, the next thing that you have the ability to do is to highlight unique values. So what that means is if I have a parameter that's different in different scenarios, I want to actually highlight that value in this table itself. So let's take a look at the pump speed. So if I scroll up just a little bit more and look at the pump, this is pump J203, and we're looking at speed. So speed, this is highlighted in yellow, meaning that, that it's different in different scenarios. So the scenario that I'm currently having loaded is the 85% speed scenario. So here's my 85% speed and then you can see how the changes are highlighted in different colors this way the color coding can help you quickly and easily identify which parameters have changed in which specific scenarios now i know what you're thinking this is a ton of information and it's a lot to look at well here's an easier thing that might be better for you to look at. Instead of looking at every single parameter for everything all together, just focus on the differences. So if I click on only showing me the pipe or junctions that have differences, and then only show me the differences, here's how this simplifies the table. Let me go ahead and click on both of those. So differences and differences, bam, wow. <clears throat> that simplified things dramatically. So now the only thing that I'm seeing that is different is for the pipes, it is simply the initial flow guesses parameter. The initial flow guesses are the only thing that has changed. And which scenario did it change in? Looks like only the base scenario. Everything else is the same. So if I scroll to the right, you can see here that I have the same initial guesses for flow in all of these other scenarios. 
Now, liquid elevation for the reservoir is important because that's one of the things that we were changing as well as our pump curves. So this is an excellent tool that you're gonna be wanting to get familiar with using because <clears throat> people have been asking for a long time, how are you able to compare your input across a wide range of scenarios? This is how you do it. So now you can go through each of these different scenarios and see in this, oh, I'm using five feet for my liquid level. I should be using, you know, here's where you can see where it changed. And uh, you can see how it color codes everything really nicely and gives you a lot of information. You can copy this data and paste it out to a spreadsheet. You can uh, then PDF it and include it in your reports. There's a lot of flexibility there. Now, if you wanna go back and make changes and say, well, I don't care about a whole bunch of these pump parameters and I don't care about initial guesses. So let's go back and let's turn those parameters off. Here's where you would click on modify comparison. So if I go down and click on modify comparison, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at the parameters section and I'm gonna turn off the initial guesses. So I turn off the initial guesses for heat exchangers, I'm gonna turn off the initial guesses for pumps, wherever they are. And let's turn off initial guesses for pipes because they're just initial guesses. There we go. All right, so now if we re-show the comparison, it simplifies it even further. If you remember, <clears throat> there were pipe parameters and heat exchanger parameters. Look at this. For pipes, no differences in the parameters that I've selected. I took off the initial guesses, so it's not including that anymore. So that's the multi-scenario comparison tool. Pretty handy. All right. One other new feature that I want to demonstrate on this particular model itself <clears throat> has to do with the visual report. So let's take a look at the visual report. You've always had the ability to show and display your results right on top of the model itself. And so here in this particular model, I'm showing the inlet and outlet pressure and the flow rate for all of my pipes. And I'm showing K factor and DP for my junctions. Apologies. <laughs> had to mute myself for a second there. All right, so uh, here's the new thing, is when you're looking at your results, if you go to the output window, the summary tabs here at the top, these contain component-specific results that have to do with only those particular types of junctions. So, a best efficiency point is only applicable to pumps. A valve CV has nothing to do with heat exchangers. So these are where you can find component specific results. You're not gonna look into general junction results down here. That's just basic information, inlet pressure, outlet pressure, flow rate, K factor, etc. So for the longest time, you've been able to look at the bottom section for the common junction results, but I wanna show junction specific results. Well, that's one of the new things that you can do. So if I go to the visual report control, let's click on uh, this, or, so the, the pipe properties, that's nothing new, I'm not gonna go over that and neither is the common junction parameters. That's all the same. So these are all the same common junction parameters that you're familiar with. But, oops, I didn't wanna 
check everything there. There's only two things that I was showing. Uh, loss factor and pressure loss. There we go. Let's collapse this. Okay, so let's look at the pump. What specific information do I want to show on the pump? Maybe I want to show head rise. Maybe I want to show uh, speed. And let's take a look at the percent of BEP. So I want to show those three parameters for pumps. For valves, let's take a look at the valve CV value. And let's take a look at the equivalent orifice diameter uh, just for fun. Now, in this example, my heat exchanger is not doing heat transfer, so I'm going to ignore that. And then for the reservoirs, let's show the liquid service elevation. So now we can see that that uh, expands and shows a lot more detail. So this is one of the things that I'm really excited about because it's been a long time coming where there are certain parameters that are really important to show on the visual report. And now you can include all of the junction specific parameters that you would see in the summary tabs of the general section of the output window. So you just go into visual report, the eyeball for visual report control, and then choose which specific parameters for the uh, particular junctions that you want to show. <coughs> now, there's two ways that you can filter things. Right now, I am showing all of the parameters. If I want to filter things down a little bit and only show things uh, filtered based upon what's in my output control window, this simplifies it a little bit. That way you don't have to scroll as much. So you can still filter things in that same way. All right. Now let's talk about some other uh, useful uh, new features that have to do with model building. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and open up a, uh, a new uh, model. So give me one quick moment here. All right, so for doing this, let's go ahead and turn on the isometric grid. So I'm going to go to uh, arrange, pipe drawing mode, and I'm going to use isometric. And I'm going to go ahead and show my grid. So here's my isometric grid. Now, let's say that you have a reservoir and you have several pumps well let's say that you have a pump here another pump here another pump here and another pump here and then you have branch junctions where you might want to have things uh being in place for connecting things together well for the longest time You've had the ability where if you double click on a pipe, you can draw as many pipes as you want. And as you can see, when you're using the isometric grid, it's arranging these in a very odd fashion. <laughs> and so uh, if I go in and uh, select these, I can select all these pipes and delete them. So one of the things with the isometric grid is when you draw a pipe, you click and drag. If you can see that little red dotted line, that gives you a visual indicator of what your pipe is going to look like when you let go of the mouse button. Now, if you move your mouse wheel, you can change how that pipe is going to be laid. Excuse me. You can change how that pipe is going to be laid out. You can do the same thing with the arrow keys on your keyboard. That way. You can change the style of how it's going to draw that pipe on the ISO grid. <coughs> so one of the things that's been very useful <coughs> over the years is being able to double click on the pipe drawing tool where you can then draw as many pipes as you want, wherever you want, in a very easy fashion. Well, I had the idea. This is actually a feature that I came up with. I said, hey. What if you double clicked on a junction? That way you can 
drag, or you can put as many junctions on the workspace as you want. So here's the painful way of doing it, where you have to drag a, a branch onto each different location, constantly going back to the workspace. Well, there is a little bit easier way. Let's say you draw a pump. You can select that pump and then duplicate it multiple times, but then you have to go in and still manually arrange these things. Well, here's another new feature that is just incredible. If you go to the edit menu, look at this, undo. Here are a whole bunch of different actions that I just did that you can undo. Control Z works in the same way. So let's try it. If I do Control Z, it undoes that movement. It undoes that movement and that one, and then it takes the pumps off. That's the undo feature. If you do control Y, that's redo. So this is one of the beautiful new features of Fathom 11 and Arrow 8 is multiple levels of undo and multiple levels of redo. So that's something that is really helpful. And it's mainly with regard to uh, the graphical layout of the junctions themselves, not necessarily the input when you actually double click on a pipe or a junction to enter input information. So it's basically anything that you do on the workspace that can be undone or redone. So that's something that we're all really excited about. Now, let's come back to it with placing junctions. So now if you double click on a junction, I'm gonna double click on my branch first. So I double clicked it. You can see how it's blue. That means it's gonna stay active. So now wherever I click my mouse, it's going to drop a branch right there. I can do a whole bunch of fun stuff like this. And then once you're done dragging and or once you're done placing the junctions, hit the escape button and that turns off the uh, junction placement. Uh, I could undo all of these if I want, or I can just select them and delete them. So now let's do the same thing with the pump. So I double click on the pump junction, one, two, three, four, hit escape to turn it off. And now I can double click on my pipe drawing tool. So I'm gonna come down and I'm going to arrange these and hit escape. And so what I can do is select these guys and then do duplicate. And I can include them on there. Now, as you can see with uh, the isometric grid, um, I had too much space available uh, between those things. So let me edit this here. There we go. So we'll try this again. We'll do that. Duplicate. And there we go. So that is multiple levels of undo. It's how you can double click a junction and you can place as many as you want all throughout your network. And those are some really useful features that will help you build a model much more easily. Now let's go ahead and delete everything. And let me erase my drawings. And so i uh, talked about those things. Now let's talk about the new auto rotate feature. This is another thing that's really cool. So let's say that I have a elbow or uh, let's go ahead and put some pipes in first. So I'm gonna put a pipe here and I'm gonna put a pipe here. Well, let's say that I want to place a elbow junction at that location right there. Here's what happens if I just drag and drop the elbow anywhere on the workspace. That's what it looks like. So clearly, if I was to just drag this right on top of the pipe where it's supposed to go, it's not gonna be oriented properly. Until now, 
<laughs> until now in the latest version. Watch what happens. Did you see that? Let me do it again. So I'm going to drag and drop another pipe in here. Watch carefully. Pay attention to the look of the elbow. If I right click, you can see that there's all these different icons that you can place. <coughs> This doesn't have any impact on the uh, hydraulic behavior of the junction at all. It's only for visual aesthetics. But look at this. If I drag and drop this elbow, see what it looks like before I let go of my mouse? Once I drag it right onto those pipes, Fathom and Arrow, uh, Arrow 8, they now know what that elbow should look like, and it also goes in and it picks the appropriate isometric icon that it should use in that particular um, fashion. So uh, let's do another example. Let's, uh, let's do a T. So let's say that we have something that looks like this. So I'm going to click and drag my T junction and draw, drop it right on. Bam. Did you see that? It took the T and it appropriately selected the proper uh, icon that it should use for that particular format. Let's see if we can do one that makes it look like this. So let me zoom out. So we'll go one two, three, and let's drag and drop another T right on top of that. Bam. <laughs> so that's really cool. Uh, you still have the ability to click on that and you can rotate your icons all day long as much as you want, but now it'll automatically rotate everything in place. Now let's say that you accidentally get some things unaligned. So let's say that your stuff looks like that. Man, I want to go ahead and re-do uh, all my icons. Well, if you go to the Arrange menu, there's an option where you can... Let's see, let me try selecting them. So if I select those two T's on the workspace, I can go to Arrange, and I can say Auto-Rotate the Icons, and bam, that puts it right back. So let's say you do accidentally rotate some icons uh, in the way that you don't want it to look. Just select them on the workspace, go to the Arrange menu, and say Auto-Rotate the Icons, and bam, it'll figure out the proper orientation for you. One other note on T's is we've simplified the property window to make it a little bit easier to know what you're dealing with. So if I double click on this T here, <coughs> we still have simple T's and detailed T's like we've always done. But as you can see, when you choose the simple T option, we've gotten rid of everything in that window because all of the stuff that you would have defined here in previous versions, it doesn't make any impact on the results. The only time where it has an impact is if you choose the detailed option. In that case, the detail option, we now have pictures that make things a little bit more clear as to what you're needing to specify. So you only see this pictures when you're doing detailed. If you're doing simple, it makes it nice and easy for you. All right, a couple more new features before we finish things off. Let me go ahead and open up another uh, model here. Give me one moment. All right. So this is a uh, model that I wrote a blog on a while back. If you go back to our tips and tricks page and uh, you scroll down a little bit, I think it might be on page two. I wrote an article for Fathom 
uh, 10 when it came out. I guess maybe it's on page three. Page four. Okay. So if you were to do a keyword search for intermediate elevations, this is the article that you would find, which walks you through the system that I have modeled right here. So in this particular blog article, I demonstrate how to use the intermediate elevation feature to uh, not have all these individual branch junctions all throughout the system. So let me go back to the model there. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of different uh, branch junctions here in my flow path. Why am I using branches? These identify where I have different elevation points throughout my system. Now, in this particular model, I've already included all of my intermediate elevation changes with the feature here on the optional tab. So that's already set up. But in the initial system on the left hand side, it's not. So if I want to know what my elevation profile is, I would have to do a profile plot for all of these individual different pipes. Now there's a combined pipes feature in AFT Fathom. So if I was to select all the pipes and junctions here in that flow path, I can go to, let's see. Oh man, I'm trying to remember where the menu was. Ah, here it is. <laughs> so under the edit menu, it's this feature right here that says join selected pipes and junctions. So if you click on that, here's what happens. It combined all of those pipes successfully. And now I have one single pipe on the workspace. If I open that up, it intelligently combines the correct pipe length of all of the pipes together and it automatically creates the intermediate elevation profiles for me. So if you have a whole bunch of junctions in a flow path and you want to combine things to simplify your model, you can now do this in Fathom. And so that's how that works. If you had some junctions in there, like in this scenario where I have an elbow, I have a valve, I have another valve where I've got some K factors in this fashion here, then what this will do is it will also include the K factor for all of those fittings. So if you look less loss factor, 0.39, uh, 1.95, etc. So if I select all these pipes and junctions, <clears throat> and I go to uh, join pipes and junctions. Take a look at this. Not only did it do the intermediate elevations, it also brought in and totaled up the total K factor for all of the junctions that were in that flow path. That way I'm still accounting for all the minor losses. All right. Uh, one last tool that I want to demonstrate for you is our magnifier. So let me go back into my base scenario here. As you can see, even in this particular system, I have a lot of stuff going on and, uh, you know, pipes and junctions are fairly close to each other. So let's zoom out a little bit. There's a new magnifier tool on the workspace toolbar right here which is really useful. If I was to click on that and activate it, wherever I put my mouse, it's going to magnify that area. So look at where my mouse is pointed on the workspace, and then beside it, you see a magnifying glass. And so wherever you move your mouse, that will magnify those parts of your model for you. So that's a useful feature. You can change the size of the magnifying glass by clicking on that drop-down menu. You can make your zoom level 
uh, further away or closer in. So here I'm uh, zooming in a lot more closely. <clears throat> you can also make your magnifying glass a lot larger. So if you want to really be able to see a lot of stuff, especially if you have a very uh, complicated system where you have a lot of stuff in a very small area, then you might be using a larger magnifying glass with a deeper zoom level. And so uh, that's available to you. And you can also use the magnifier on the visual report as well. Uh, so on the visual report, here's my same magnifying glass. Okay, well, that basically covers some of the top new features that we have in AFT Fathom 11. Again, this is not an exhaustive webinar of all of the new features. If you want more information about the new features, turn it off, then you can go to our website. Again, how do you find it? Simply go to products and then the particular AFT product that you're working with, view the full list of features, and then view Fathom 11 new features, and here's where you can see the full list. But the Fathom 11 help file is gonna be a little bit better. When you open up the help file, this is what you're gonna see. If you expand the first section, getting started with AFT Fathom, here's what's new in Fathom 11. This will walk you through a lot more of the new features that we have in the software, and it'll provide links in the help file to further discussions to learn how to use them in more detail. Alrighty, that is it for today. Thank you all very much for listening in and joining me in this webinar. I hope that you all take care and stay safe and hope that we all work through this well together. Thanks again, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your week.